I probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for RC picking me up and, and bringing me into his team to allow me to keep my career going and, and uh, getting that 19th win last year, uh, 19th year in a row of winning a race last year was, uh, was really awesome. Want to do nothing more than to be able to go to victory lane again this year and make it number 20. Freak Nation, back in Lucas Oil Studios. Kyle Bush joins the Freaks as we get set for a big weekend coming up in uh, Sunday Easter. Holy smokes. In Martinsville. And Kyle, coming up next hour, we're talking about some numbers that come out of Las Vegas for the Formula One race, taxes and revenue and so forth, which reminded me, first time we spoke with you, I don't know how old you were, 16, 17 years old, about 20 years ago in Las Vegas, your hometown. I think you had a waistline of about 20 inches and you weighed maybe 120 pounds when we stuck a mic in front of your face. Uh, which is more surprised that you're still around racing with children or that speed freaks are still doing their thing almost 24 years? Probably me still being around for sure. Uh, yeah, no, it's definitely been uh, a whirlwind career and man, you're giving me a rundown memory lane where uh, I once upon a time actually was, was skinny, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know if you're calling me fat now or what, but uh, you're giving me a complex. So overall, you know, it's been a great career, had a great time and, um, you know, lucky to still be here, obviously. I think it's the only time I've ever seen you in khaki pants. I, I, I'll, I'll show the interview during, during this piece. Those were the Roush days. Yeah, I remember. They always wore khakis and white button downs. Yeah. It was a white button down. Yeah, it sure it was. was. <laughs> I think we were in front of the former Hilton hotel and that the big Nextel, the monorail, race, the monorail thing was just built or something like that. You were doing a very good job of showing us around your city. Let's put it that there way. There you go. Perfect. Glad I could help. <laughs> right. All right, Kyle. So Martinsville's coming up and some numbers that we've seen with your paint scheme last year with Lucas oil. And if I get this right, uh, your die cast, which I have here, oh, look at that mm. behind me. Go. Uh, evidently was top three in sales last year, but was the number one selling die cast for winning cars. Race worn. Ra yes. Race worn cars. Right? Dude, that's bananas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The race, the victory lane version cars or whatever they want to call them. Yeah. That, that was, that was really cool. Really special. I mean, everybody was, uh, I mean, a car was not only a big hit, everybody loved the look of it, you know, and, having the solid blue scheme and, and Lucas Oil all over there. But um, I think, too, you know, a lot of that had to do with my first win at RCR and um, going to Victory Lane, the final race at Fontana Speedway, which, um, you know, still kind of hurts to say. But, you know, it it, uh, it came at the perfect time and, and got us to Victory Lane early in the season to allow us a lot of different strategy plays throughout the rest of the season. You know, we'll get back to more Lucas Oil talk. Obviously, we've got that similarity, that connection in our motorsports family. But we brought up Las Vegas a little bit. Now we're talking about Fontana. NASCAR, obviously, it is still top of the page to want to get into the SoCal market. Where do you think they should go? Now that Long Beach is seemingly going to stay with IndyCar, where would be a good venue for NASCAR in Southern California? Um, I mean, honestly, Irwindale is a fantastic racetrack. It's really aged well. The last few years that we saw some of the, um, you know, that, that winter race with the super late models that was there um, was, was a really good show. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty fun facility. You know, you could add some grandstands around there. I have no idea what the roads look like around there. It's been so long since I've been there. But, um, you know, to me, I feel like that could be a, a good start to just kind of having – you know, a beginning of the year clash at the Coliseum type race where you're not trying to bring in 50,000 people to one of our big races or one of our end of the year races. You know, you're just trying to bring in 10, 20, 25, 30, maybe to uh, to a beginning of the year kind of showdown. Ooh, I like where you're going with this. Kind of in the vein of we don't necessarily need to be downtown L.A. at the Coliseum. Bring it to the track that's already there, Irwindale, and let's make an event out of that. Is that kind of where you're going? Yeah, no, exactly, exactly, you know, but I've, I've, I've heard all the rumblings of it year after year after year of it's going away, they're going to demolish it, it's going to get dug up, it's turning into this, it's turning into that, so you never know where, when it's going to be or how long it's going to be around, but uh, if it's still there, man, let's use it. All right, can we talk about this short track pass package with the car that you guys have now? It's, I was frustrated at Phoenix. It seemed like Toyota had an edge over what you guys have with Chevy. 
Is it a manufacturer thing or is it a team by team thing? What are we looking at for the rest of the year so far? Um, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. I think the uh, I think the Toyota guys have definitely figured out something and they're definitely a, a step ahead, whether it's their body or whether it's just their setup or whatnot. But, you know, the the information share that they have going on with uh, 2311 and JGR, obviously, they've got some really good stuff. And, you know, the, the information sharing whatnot that we have with Hendrick and stuff, you know, we were definitely a step behind uh, all that all the Chevys were uh, at Phoenix. So, you know, we, we saw last year both races at Phoenix be won by a Chevy. And this year, it's like if you were up front and you had track position, you could hold it. But it was never like the Chevys were ever going forward and taking the lead, you know. So um, definitely seeing a, a discrepancy or disparity there uh, at that speedway. Kyle Bush, we were uh, having a conversation in the show about horsepower in uh, cup cars. And they were talking about numbers as big as a thousand horsepower, especially at road courses. How do you feel about that? I think uh, drivers like yourself that have experience uh, can't handle anything, but if there's less horsepower, drivers can drive around the guys that don't know what they're doing. To me, that would make more sense. There'd be more competition. Well, um, I think what we're all looking for is the opportunity of more off-throttle time. So whatever allows you to have more off-throttle time is more beneficial to racing. It's going to make the better drivers, the better cars, the guys that know how to set it up better come to the forefront. So if you're at Phoenix, for instance, and you have a thousand horsepower, instead of braking at the one marker where everybody's braking, you're going to you're going to start getting guys breaking at the two marker or even the three marker or somewhere in between. And that's 100 feet difference. So, you know, 10 feet of being able to get out of the gas uh, different than a guy is is a lot and could lend itself to some passing to some side by side to the good guys having an issue on pit road, but being able to drive back up through the field rather than. Like Denny, for instance, at Phoenix, got stuck in traffic. He couldn't go anywhere. I think he finished 13th or 14th because he he couldn't pass. You know, once he got back in traffic, there was just nothing that he could do. And he was a guy who ran in the top three the whole race. I think another aspect of it, too, is not just the braking of it, uh, but it's also the acceleration. When you get into the corners and you're in the middle of the corner, instead of just being able to go, boom, down and done with the throttle, you know, you're going to have to be feathering it and you're going to have to be playing with it some in order to get the gas down uh, and accelerating out of the turn, but you're not just going to be able to to do it all at the same point as everybody else. Hmm. Yeah, that I guess that would have to do with car setup and have more than just ha hold on like a drag racer. And yeah, and, uh, well, I mean, like right now, a lot of guys they set up their cars as free as they can set them up. They just want to be able to roll the middle of the corner and they can still put the gas down. If you do that with a thousand horsepower, you're not driving off the corner. You're burning your rear tires off the corner. So, uh, you know, it lends itself to a bigger window that guys are going to be playing in as well with their setups on how tight do they want to be? How loose do they want to be? Do they want to be fast on the short run? Do they want to be good on the long run? And Kyle, you've been in NASCAR a long time, had a huge amount of success, won uh, two championships, I think. Uh, what do you think about the idea of NASCAR racing at Long Beach? That was a headline for a couple of days this week. Would you like to to be there? Is the track too narrow? Would it require a lot of change to fit cup cars at Long Beach? Uh, the only corner that concerns me is the last corner. You know how you all come into that horseshoe and, um, you know, having some calamity there with the cup cars, guys getting turned around and becoming a parking lot. But um, I think we proved that the, the city streets actually isn't a bad thing. We ran the city of Chicago last year and, there were some tight areas to that place as well, but um, all seemed to go well. So I would say, uh, let's do it. Let's give it a go. And, um, you know, if we're already doing it in Chicago, why not L.A.? Streets well, of L.A. Now we're back to that L.A. conversation. I like the streets, though. I like that. Well, Long Beach. I guess that's a little further south, but <laughs> you get it. Hey, are these conversations, Kyle Bush, that you have with Brexton about running on different different racetracks with the dirt, with the different turns, the undulation and so forth. Are these things that uh, you find yourself having conversations with your son, instructing him on certain aspects of these race courses? And he just says, screw you, dad, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. <laughs> uh, yes and no. I mean, there's definitely been some times where we've, we've gone over, where do we want to go race this week? You know, and sometimes it could be a bandolero race. Sometimes it could be a quarter midget race. Sometimes it could be a, a dirt race, whether it's a go-kart or, or a restricted micro or something like that, you know? So 
obviously um, he's, he's got his fair share of vehicles that he gets to choose from and we get to go race all over the country with him. So it's pretty neat that we do, that we get to do all of that and uh, that he can run as much as he gets to run. You know, we talked about this with Kyle Larson last week about how things have changed in NASCAR where 25, 30 years ago, you wouldn't see Daryl Waltrip's family or Richard Petty's family or Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s family, all these family coming up to him during the during a race win and really being a part of the process. Yet now yourself, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson and others, you see their kids. It's one of the first shots that Fox or NBC jumps up on is them running to their dad in the race car that that's got to ease some of that relief of being away from your family during the weekend. No, it, it, yeah, it certainly does. I mean, a lot of times, you know, they, they come with me, uh, they're there for the weekend. There's some times where they don't, you know, we let them try to be at home with their friends and, and live a little bit of a normal life at least. And, uh, just kind of hang out on the weekends with their buddies and go to the pool or, or, you know, go hunting out in the, in the woods or something like that. So, you know, but a lot of times when I travel to my races, he'll come with or, you know, Samantha will come, Brexton will come, they'll all, Lennox will come and we'll all be together because, you know, we we do this so much during the year. It's 38 weekends out of the year. If you go away every single weekend, that's a lot of time that you're missing at home. So I would say the kids probably come around to at least 30 races out of the year, which is really good. Um, keeps us all all together and gives us an opportunity or me an opportunity to still see them grow. You don't so what's going to happen, Kyle Bush, if your son decides he wants to go pro stock racing or nitro racing or <laughs> something other than round and around in a circle? Is he going to get that opportunity or are you going to say you got to do what daddy's doing? Um, I bet you if we asked him, he would say that that's too boring, that <laughs> it's, it's not long enough. You're not doing something for, an, for enough of a period of time. Has he had the opportunity to, to, to go to a drag race? You you or your brother did some drag racing and some exhibition kind of stuff at one time, didn't you? Uh, actually, Kurt ran a, a pro stock event one time. I think it was back in 2012 or something like that. He ran, a, he ran an event. Um, he made the show. He qualified in, and then he, he lost first round. But he did do that. Um, I've been to some drag races before. I took Brexton, actually, to the Charlotte Nationals uh, last year. And we walked around the pits and stuff like that. We got to see a couple passes on the track and stuff. And he was like, this is too loud. And that's all they race. And I'm like, yeah, they run for about three and a half seconds. They want to be less than that. And then they go back to the pits and they work on their stuff for a couple hours. And he goes, yeah, I want to race more. <laughs> he would probably do it if he could run a motorcycle, a pro stock car, a funny car. And a top fueler. If he could do all divisions, he would probably want to do that. He's a he's a pure bush. He's got the racing genes, and he wants to be out there. <laughs> you were racing. Uh, I remember when the Winston Cup was out there. They they wouldn't let you race for a while because of the Winston cigarette deal. He wasn't uh, eighteen yet. Yeah, he's always you got the gene, so I imagine he has it too. Yeah, no, you're right. When I was when I was 16, I made it to the truck series, and then I was actually supposed to make um, my first Cup Series start late that year as well, too. And um, just yeah, they changed the rules, so unfortunately, it wasn't it wasn't going to be at 16, but it ended up being at 18. So um, all's good, you know. Those those are the good old days. I remember trying to uh, race in that truck series and be competitive against everybody, and um, you know that was probably my worst but fondest memory of Fontana. <laughs> was being quickest in truck series practice and then getting yanked from the truck. And then uh, lo and behold, 20 something years later, I'm, I'm winning the final race there in, in the cup series. Yeah. There needs to be a book written about Fontana and you need to be cover to cover. That's just such a cool Bananas. story. Now, real quick in going to Martinsville, going to other tracks, you don't pack for Lennox. Do you Samantha really called you out this week on dressing Lennox? Not your yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't pack for her. No, sometimes I let her choose what she wants to wear and it's not quite exactly what she, uh, but oh, is that you what can't argue with week? a two-year-old. You, you just let it go. You know, I, I don't want to fight that battle. <laughs> so speaking of fighting battles, you'd learn how to braid hair yet? No, no, not yet. I haven't done that. I can barely get into a ponytail right now. So that's still <laughs> Dude, a, a little yeah, ways away. <laughs> That's the ultimate test when you could get her ready for school and get the hair combed and just right. You can yeah. figure that out. Then, you know, that's that's dad time. There. But I got to call mom for help on that. That's another thing. You, you you the hats that you wear, dude, you're also teacher. You guys homeschool them. 
So, I mean, there is that on your plate as well. Yeah, no, we, 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 Samantha does it. Uh, I don't do it as much. Samantha does it more. And then we also have, um, you know, a, a helping hand that comes over to does school with Rexton and, um, you know, we're, we're working on Lennox stuff right now. She's obviously only two, so there's not much going there, but, uh, I tell you what, she is very smart and uh, very talkative for a two-year-old and loves reading all of her books. So that's pretty fun. Ooh, all right. Kyle Bush joining us here in the Freak Nation, flying those Lucas Oil colors in Martinsville. Happy to be a part of the Lucas Oil family. We're going on about 24 years with the group and happy that Kyle Bush and oh, Richard Childress has frankly been a part of the Lucas Oil family yeah. for a couple of decades as well. But Kyle, speaking of Richard Childress, we'll end it with this. Roush, gosh, let me get this straight. Roush, Henrik. Uh, Gibbs and RCR of those four, I'm curious. I don't, it's tough to pinpoint who who meant the most to your career. Not necessarily wins, but really the projection of Kyle Busch of those four owners. Um, that's a great question. They they all had great influence. Um, obviously, without the Roush stuff, I I never would have got seen and run as good as I did with uh, with them. And and then to be able to get into the Hendrick stuff or the Gibbs stuff and you know, my, my Hendrick relationship was short, um, had some wins there though, but, um, not as much as what Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson was winning at the time. So had some, um, you know, had some good runs over there. And then, um, my last year there, I think I finished third or fifth or something in points. So that was, that was pretty good. Um, and then, you know, obviously JGR, I would say has meant the most to my career, just with the success that I've had there and the wins that we had there. And, you know, being a part of the Toyota team for as, for as much as I was, that was probably the biggest the biggest reason. And then, um, you know, hey, I I probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for RC picking me up and and bringing me into his team to allow me to keep my career going and and uh, getting that 19th win last year, uh, 19th year in a row of winning a race last year was uh, was really awesome. Want to do nothing more than to be able to go to Victory Lane again this year and make it number 20. So um, you know, we can carry on that legacy of uh, of myself in the Cup Series. Bang. Oh, you'll get it. Oh, you'll get it. Yep. But Cheddar's, with it, all the sponsors that they have with you, they're such a family. I see all this stuff that goes on with, with Cheddar's and last year with McLaren Girls and just all the others, the Mark Three, and it's cool. Everybody's got your back socially. So that's it's just fun to be a part of. It certainly is. No, that, that's been one of the great things about being over at, uh, at RCR is with all the different partners that we do have, they are very involved in the race program and are a big nut of what we do over there. So it gives us um, a great sense of uh, achievement and appreciation for all of them when we're able to go out there and win. And uh, we want to do nothing more than to be able to go to victory lane. And of course, when you do win, all of our sponsors have some special cool promotion, but none cooler probably than Cheddar's where you can go to Cheddar's <laughs> restaurants on Monday and get a free number eight special. So, Hey, nothing better than winning and free food. But you got to have Lucas oil but, in your but, car. But they don't have the there. most badass looking <laughs> freaking race winning diecast buddy Jeez. i mean some people are into it they they might dip their chicken tenders into the lucas oil i don't know <laughs> don't recommend it don't recommend. use it for your car Good right, for KB. your car not for your body cheddars for your body lucas oil for your car that's right. right keep your injectors clean bang all right man hey good luck in martinsville we'll see you out there partner you got it sounds good appreciate y'all you take car maintenance seriously and you want to pass on that legacy of care. Use Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer to shield your engine from excessive heat, debris, and friction. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. Now that's a good looking tire from General Tire, the official tire of the ARCA Racing Series. You can't get that one on your hot rod, but you can get now through the end of April four qualifying passenger tires and get up to 70 bucks back the Visa prepaid card. We can all use a little bit of cake in our wallet in our purse, in our pockets, right? Four qualifying passenger tires get up to 70 bucks back from General Tire. General Tire, over 20 years with the freaks, and of course, General Tire delivers. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun, featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year.